Uh, well, hi everyone uh, who's watching and we have our speakers ready to go. Hello from Bond University Library, I'm Sue Hutley uh, and we have our new University Librarian with me today, Sarah Fredlar. Um, so uh, it's my great pleasure as the new convener of the QLOC Staffing Issues Working Party to welcome you to this webinar. And the Working Party last year did a really interesting uh, range of discussions about staff engagement. And so we're really pleased to kick off the QLOC year this, uh, this year, 2018, with um, a really just a short webinar for everyone to hopefully be inspired by a couple of our colleagues today. So um, our first speaker is Tatum McPherson Crowey from the Australian Catholic University. Tatum's got quite a, an extensive presentation for us today. She's got a lot of um, experience and um, examples in um, this area. And then we're going to have a few questions for Tatum and then we're going to move on to Alex to tell us um, a little bit um, in a short segment about some of the activities at Charles Darwin University. So um, everyone, it's my great pleasure to welcome Tatum and Tatum over to you. Great, thank you. I'm just going to uh, share my desktop with everyone. Can I just check, has that, um, has that come through to you? I can see Alex nodding, great, lovely. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to present um, this QLOC webinar. Uh, I'd like to begin with our acknowledgement to country. Hopefully I have captured all the locations from where people are dialing in. And as Sue mentioned, um, I'd like to talk about the staff engagement program that we offer at, at ACU and that comes out of the library. So we have a couple of different things that we offer. Um, but we don't do anything alone within the library. We, we work with the university more broadly and other areas of the university. So I'll touch on those as well, just so that you get um, a fuller picture of the context in which this program sits and how it's supported and what it's linked to. So I'll begin with a bit of background about our organisation. So we have roughly uh, 95, 96 FTE. Um, however, that translates to about a headcount of 113. And I think that will slightly increase as we start semester. We have six campus libraries. Um, our university has seven campuses in Australia and one campus in Rome. And where we have those six campus libraries, they're mainly along the eastern seaboard of Australia. And what's most important to me when, when organising staff experiences and staff engagements um, and staff learning opportunities is to actually really think about uh, where the individual people are, not just campus libraries, the buildings, the facilities, it's where actually are the staff. And so whilst we have these six campus libraries, which often staff are attached to. Our staff are actually dispersed across 10 different buildings. And it's just something else that needs to be um, thought about when you're trying to, to offer people opportunities so that they can actually take advantage of those opportunities. And I'm sure like all of your libraries, we have a great number of different combinations of staffing. So we have all the usual ones, semester-based, part-time, evenings, weekends, um, and then full-time continuing. Uh, and we have some casual staff as well. Um, we also have the, the fairly standard breakdown of staff, such as executive, managers, supervisors, librarians, library technicians, library assistants, and then also shelvers, many of whom are also ACU students. So again, just trying to actually think about the people who you want to provide engagement experiences and learning opportunities to, what might their interests be, where are they located, what's possible for them, um, how to make it easier for them to engage with things. The other thing I wanted to mention about the library is that um, at the moment, 
we have a fairly interesting uh, breakdown of length of service. Um, and it's it's been changing o over time. But I'd say at the moment, we have roughly half of our staff that have been here for over 10 years. And um, I fall into to that camp. So I'm uh, entering into my 11th year at ACU. And then we have the other half of staff, and it, it's just, you know, roughly half, um, that have been here between one and three years. And uh, that also has an impact on um, their, how they're going to engage, what they'd like to engage with, um, and especially if you're trying to provide or, or design a structure or a framework for things. Again, just, just trying to sort of hit that middle ground that, uh, that will be of interest to the, to the broadest selection of staff. Um, so where does the library sit more broadly? So within the university, um, we, these are the four pillars of our university and um, they, sit, they sit in addition to our values, but I think the four pillars um, are just, they're really easy to connect with. And uh, some of the language is a, a little bit new about these pillars, even for our own staff. Um, it's the result of some rebranding that we've had at the university. So it's, it's actually really exciting to, to do this presentation and see all of our new branding. I think it's the first time I've, I've used it for a presentation. And um, I was just mentioning to Alex before we started that, yeah, I, I quite like the red and purple. It, it's, it's working. Um, so some of the language is, is new to our, to our rebranding, but the values, um, I can say that, that these are the values that were mentioned to me in my interview 11 years ago. As an institution, how we see ourselves and what we have to offer to the community and to our students and to our employees really hasn't changed. Um, but the way in which we do it, the facilities that we have, the technology that we use, of course, that's just evolved um, year by year. So, um, so that's, that's the context of where a, a library staff engagement program needs to sit. Um, also, as a Catholic university, um, there's a very strong area of identity and mission. And uh, one of our values is to be a university of service, which sits within the, um, the Catholic intellectual tradition. And uh, our motto of the university is to act in truth and love. And I mention all these things because one of the things that I was very interested in when I was um, developing a library staff development program was I wanted to try and find a way to offer our staff similar opportunities to what we're able to give our students. It's a pretty big thing to try and do because as you can imagine, it's, it's a different stakeholder relationship. But I just thought as a university of service, um, and I don't have a, a front facing role within the library. I, I sit in a back office and, um, and the library staff I consider to be my first stakeholder group or my first client group. And I really thought about, you know, we have these wonderful new things that we are offering students, services and activities and opportunities that we're providing for them. And I really just thought, well, as an employee, um, the infrastructure is already there. How do we extend that to staff so that they feel that um, they, they feel the same benefits that students are feeling with, within this university? So, and a couple of other things that sort of set us apart as, as an institution is uh, having the core curriculum. So core curriculum is a, a critical thinking and ethics unit, uh, which operates in the university. Um, also linking back to being a university of service, um, community engagement. Community engagement is huge within the university. It's uh, a part of all of our students' experience at ACU. And it's also uh, a big part of the staff experience as well, how we engage with the community. And there's a lot of different ways. Um, and something to emphasize is that those components, um, 
which are central to being a Catholic university are also invitational. So we're a publicly funded university, open to all um, staff and students do not need to be Catholic and do not need to be, not, do not need to participate in the things that are um, identified as, as Catholic. So it's, it's optional and it's invitational. So always just to, to set that out there. So there's some of the things that distinguish um, our university and uh, th were things that I had to think about as far as a library engagement program. But some of the things that are the same that everybody will recognise is that like any other university, we work towards our uh, university strategic plan. And so library engagement for us at our institution, it sits within uh, the strategic goal of corporate services. Within that strategic goal, we have key results areas, and one of which that, that I focus on quite a bit is workplace culture, staff performance, and staff development. Within our key result area, we have performance indicators or performance targets, and they're centered around the same areas. So workplace culture, workforce planning, performance excellence, and staff engagement. Uh, I'm sure it's exactly the same at your university. We also are a part of a broader portfolio. So the library at ACU sits under the portfolio of students learning and teaching. And every year we are issued with portfolio priorities. And we actually receive um, a good deal of direction. And, and it's not prescriptive, but we do have strategies outlined for us annually. And so in 2016, um, we actually had quite clear um, directives about strategies for professional staff development and particular targets that, um, that we were encouraged to meet. So stepping outside of the portfolio at a broader university level, uh, we operate within frameworks uh, around service. So we have service principles and we have a service matters framework. And as you can imagine, being the library, we're considered a service lead, which means that we have the key responsibility for delivering library services. Fairly obvious there. Uh, we also have a capability development framework for the entire university. And that crosses academic and professional staff. So any professional development programs that we offer or design within the library, there needs to be in alignment with the, um, the university's framework um, for two reasons. We, we, we can't be working um, at odds with the institution, but also to make it easier for our staff because when they uh, participate in their annual review or their performance review process, those templates, they come from HR. And so a lot of the, the detail in those reports is sculpted around the capability development framework. So it just makes sense if we're all in alignment. So something else to think about. Um, the capability development framework, as I mentioned, comes from HR. HR have their own training area. Again, I'm sure this is the same at your uni. Um, and we have a training area which is called Capabilities and Development. And they're offering opportunities that, that should and do appeal to people across the entire university at all different Hue levels. And so they do have a, uh, a structure of, of providing uh, training and they, they release an annual calendar. So they have targeted training for leaders and managers, which, which includes executive and includes supervisors. So it's actually quite a broad category and um, that can include things like a graduate certificate in higher education, which is of more interest to our academic staff. And then for our professional staff, it includes the certificate four in leadership and management through, through the TAFE education system. It includes the ELAMP program um, through the University of Melbourne. And then a range, we, we bring in a number of external trainers, but that's all organized and facilitated through HR. And again, anything that we do in the library, we're not looking to replicate any effort. It doesn't make sense at all. We want to work with what's being provided by the university and where there are gaps, um, that's, that's where I'm looking to, to work in those gaps and provide something that, um, that, that meets a need, but then also where it's really specific to library needs. So that sits in that area. We have senior management training. So um, 
graduate certificates in leadership and Catholic culture, as well as um, support for our staff to participate in the Masters of Tert Tertiary Education. Um, and uh, that's another program that's offered through Melbourne University that we support. So outside of those, those leadership tiers, uh, we have all the, the usual training across all the, all the different areas. So whether it's finance or HR, conduct, we have quite, a, um, quite an extensive orientation program at ACU. It's called You at ACU. And it's actually a multi-step orientation to the university. And I think it's because we are slightly different from other universities. Um, so that's quite a, um, well, it's a, it's a wonderful way to, to get used to uh, what's the culture at ACU, what are the different areas, what are our values and priorities. And it's just a great way to, to meet people where you are situated, because you might work for the library but you might be working in an office or a building or a campus where you don't have an opportunity to engage with other library staff. You, you might be managing a virtual team or in a building that's quite far away from other people. And so having a quite a robust orientation program just really helps people um, to settle in. Um, so, so that's something else to mention. Uh, we have a lot of support for pro professional development, and this is one of the things where I'm not sure whether it's the same at other universities. But we do have for, for professional staff, so that's everybody within the library here at ACU, there are opportunities for study leave to be supported, and there's, a, there's an annual allocation that you can apply for depending on what you're studying. There are opportunities for job rotation, internal and external secondments. Um, and those internal secondments can be anywhere in the university and then external secondments anywhere outside of the university. Um, and we also have uh, a number of opportunities for higher duties as well. So not sure if that's the same at other places, but that's, that's sort of other things that, um, that sort of fit in the mix that we offer here at ACU. Um, and there's one other area just to mention uh, that that's uh, sort of ha has an impact on the library is we have a national learnings team. Um, and because we are a national university, we needed a national committee and a national staff of team that that could consider not just the needs of all the different areas of the university, but people that were actually thinking about um, the logistics behind it and and that's part of what this national learnings team does and I'm actually a member of that uh, that team and we we meet fairly regularly it's chaired by HR um, and it's a great opportunity to feed back to the institution and remind them about how the needs are different on the different campuses and that might have to do with the staff that are on that campus or the units that function on those campuses. And so there's a lot of opportunity to, to contribute and to feedback. So that's all available there. Um, so where are we now? So it feels like I spoke a lot about the background. So where are we now as far as what do we offer? So we offer two main programs in the library, one of which is ACU Library Staff Share, and the other program is um, ACU Library Staff Development Exchange Program. So the Staff Exchange Program, pretty self-explanatory, it's, it's a framework for allowing staff to go on longer exchange programs and to also receive a staff member from another institution. And that has full support from, uh, from management and executive. Um, and so that's, that's been operating since, uh, or well, that came into being in 2006. Also in 2006, we piloted uh, the ACU Library Staff Share Program. And I will go into uh, quite a bit of detail about that program. Um, but just to sort of say at the outset that it is a program that has been tailored and customised for ACU. Um, I didn't develop the program at all. All credit goes to the University of Michigan Library who developed this program in 2015 and it's just wonderful. So I'll show you some more details about that. So 
again, as with all your institutions, I think one of the biggest things when it does come to library engagement and, uh, and staff engagement and staff learning opportunities is evolving with your learning environment. So it's a pretty ugly slide, I do apologise for that, but really just to emphasise that even, even in a short amount of time, you can have this amazing framework or a, a really great structure that, that you think is going to work and then you only need one technology upgrade or a piece of technology that works in a different way as you expect it to and it can it can really start to pick apart your program at the seams. So the top screen is when our institution was using Echo 360 for our um, non-teaching video recordings. Um, and apparently that didn't last long. And then we had a custom platform, ACU Rewind, so that we could again share um, our learning and teaching and meetings and things like that. And then, and then that didn't last too long either. So, Anything that we do, and, and that includes the staff share program, has had to adapt every time the technology changes. And obviously, we, we don't, um, we're not responsible for that. So um, we just get told by IT that all systems are going to switch over on a particular date and we just need to scramble and update everything. But I'm sure it's the same at your uni as well. And not only with the, uh, the technology that impacts uh, and a staff engagement and learning program, it's some of the other changes that we've had in our library. Um, and again, I think it's the same as yours. We've had uh, change plans where we've um, re-teamed and, and uh, reorientated and refocused uh, staff and uh, operational areas. So that's been happening from 2015. And uh, I think I think we're done now. Um, I think I think I think we'll sit this way for for a little while. It it seems to be working well, but naturally there's there's a lot that needs to be done after a change plan, um, and it can range from introducing people to new work areas, new teams, new tasks, and sometimes completely new new roles and jobs, um, and then also opening that up to them and, and um, showing them that there's a, an entirely different career path available to them and perhaps getting them excited about future directions. So there's lots of things in that area. And when IT isn't changing their technology, well, you know, we wouldn't want our staff to be bored. The library changes its own technology. So in that same time, um, we transitioned to at first, it was a supported version of Alma and Primo, and now we have um, a solo instance of Alma and Primo, and with that is all the different training and certification that occurs. Um, we've just, uh, last year, we, we adopted Leganto, and then that's being rolled out more broadly, and again, there's all the associated training that goes along with that. Um, we also took on another area in 2016. We welcomed copyright um, and the copyright manager into our area. Whoops, I'm sorry, my screen just went. Um, so a combination of different things just has to keep driving the programs. So even though there's all these things happening around, whether it's in the university, in the technology space or in the library space, when it comes to staff engagement, and, um, and that's, that's one of my responsibilities, my key role I see as removing barriers for staff to participate. I really do think that staff um, are eager to learn, keen to participate, um, that they, that they want to know how to do their jobs well or, and better and, um, and, a, and are keen to le learn new things and that there are things in the workplace that might be stopping them. So as I explained, we're a multi-campus and so logistics are a big issue. Um, not only are there all the different campuses and different buildings, there's the different rosters and hello Brisbane people, your different time zone. So that's always fun. Sometimes it's pretty easy with the technology, it'll automatically reset the times, but uh, not always. So, you know, that happens as well. Um, we try and, as I showed with the screen before, we try and record everything that we do. Uh, again, for our people that work in the evenings or on the weekends, um, they shouldn't be missing out because they're working in a different time. So that's what I spend a lot of time 
and energy focusing on is every time that I go out and talk to staff in different areas and spaces is just trying to work out what are the things that prevent you from participating and how, if possible, can I get rid of that? And sometimes it's something really simple, like a, a, a misconception of what a, a forum is all about. And so just explaining to people that, no, 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 this is, this is what, it's actually, uh, what it's actually about. And sometimes it's, it's other things that are more trickier, like, like rostering and then trying to, trying to seek some sort of alignment across six campuses and different rosters. Um, we also have different operating times on all of our campuses, just, just to make things a little bit more fun. So one weekend in 2015, uh, I was reading this article at home. I, I tend to take journal articles home to, to read on a weekend. And I was reading this article and hopefully whilst I'm talking, you can just read this, the first, uh, first few sentences of this article. And I was just so taken by the program. I thought, this is what we need. These are similar challenges that we face. And I just really liked the approach. And the first thing I did after reading the article a couple of times and basically highlighting every line was I emailed Denise, Sarah and Megan and they are wonderful. And I keep in contact with them regularly. I share all the developments that we've done with our program and, um, and they keep me up to date with what they're doing. So um, Megan is still, oh no, Denise is still at University of Michigan and the program lives on uh, there, but Sarah's actually moved on to Wellesley College and she's taken the program with her there. So staff share, even though I'm speaking about ACU staff share, the, the underpinning program is, is actually operating at three different universities and you never know, your university could be next. So let me tell you a bit more about what we do as far as uh, staff share. So really, staff share is designed to be a framework that um, is about creating a cohesive institutional identity. When you've got multiple campuses with their own identities, um, but you've got libraries on every campus, it, how could we have a, cohesional, a cohesive institutional identity? Also to foster connections between colleagues, as you can imagine, I have not met every staff member in the library. I'll email them regularly, I'll talk to them, but often I don't know what they look like or I've, I've just never met them in person. It, it happens. Um, a way of increasing employee engagement when, um, when they might not be working with their team. So, so that's really interesting when you, where you've got a team spread out and they're going to training on their own campuses, but not together as a team. And um, having, having an initiative for cross unit communication, because some of our units or some of our departments within the library are only on some campuses. They're not represented on every campus. So they were some of the key things that we wanted to get across, uh, that we wanted to have built in to the framework. One of the things to point out is that I don't focus at all on the well-being aspect that's really covered, um, I think, adequately by the university. Um, particularly our area of mission and identity, they do a lot of, they do lunches and talks and meditations, they do staff retreats, guest speakers, um, we have lots and lots of events, we also have campus committees, um, you know, there's a morning tea every month, it's, it's fine, I don't, as I said, I like to work where there's a gap and something missing, so if this is already happening, um, I didn't feel a need to, to sort of offer anything in this space, so don't focus at all on well-being. The areas that I do focus on uh, is everything on this pie chart. So um, in the, the sort of red quadrant, I focus on bringing external guests into the library to either share knowledge or an experience, um, tell us about something basically. And that would be a big video conference where um, we have staff dialing in from, from their desk or, or from every campus. We offer a space share program, which uh, includes EOIs uh, or expressions of interest to, to act in positions. It includes uh, training in other areas. You might just want to have a look and observe what, uh, what somebody else's workflow or how they're managing something. Um, 
uh, longer secondments into a team. So that sort of covers that area. Sharing experience is a space where we really invite people that have gone outside of the institution to do something. So it might be they're going to Vala in six days. Um, I would hope that when our staff come back from Vala, they tell us what's exciting, what's new, what should we learn about, what should we do at the university and that sharing experience. Um, everything that's in the grey, we do that on a smaller platform. So we use Microsoft Link for that and that sort of functions as a smaller webinar. Um, so the, the other two uh, can either be video conference or face-to-face. Or -face. So sharing knowledge is often where we're introducing uh, brand new topics to the library. So before we implemented Leganto, we had a number of sharing knowledge what is this brand new thing like Anto? Before we got into how does it work? What skills do I need? What's the workflow? We had to just explain, you know, what is this reading list system? So we'd have a little webinar all about that. Um, there's also sharing work. And so that focuses on workflows. And it might be when we're introducing some staff that are on a secondment or just lending a hand to another team. And it might be, oh, you know, what are the specifications for scanning for error? What's the workflow for that? Where do we save the files? How do we do it? And then uh, sharing skills. And it could be anything from advanced cataloging to banner training, which is our student system, to how to use SharePoint or Alma fulfillment, you name it, any, any sort of skill that we need to introduce or refresh. We do a lot of refreshes. Um, and we find it's really helpful, especially when you're using cloud systems. Um, you know, you get those changes every month and uh, it, might, it might really change how, how you go about something. So we find that the refreshes really, really work well. Um, wherever possible, again, trying to offer staff the exact same opportunities or similar opportunities as to what we offer our students. Um, giving them the opportunity to learn anywhere, um, and, and BYO device. So by recording things and having things online, they can participate from their desk or they can catch up at home um, or remotely um, as they wish. So really just having that flexibility for staff um, because they are engaging with students all the time and, and talking about these same opportunities. So if we've got all the infrastructure, why not offer it to staff? With the actual staff share program, as I mentioned, we had a pilot in 2016 and that was really a full service uh, experience. There was a lot of help. Um, I also had a lot of help from other teams in the library and, um, and that worked really well. As you can imagine, when you're piloting a new program, it's, it's important to make people feel comfortable with the system. Um, in our second year, I started to scale back that support um, and, um, and it was sort of on a needs basis and it, and it really was support, it was guiding on the side. Now that we're in our third year and I believe that the program is now operational, um, we've all really stepped back from it. I've stepped back, a lot of managers and supervisors have stepped back and the program is self-sustaining and really directed by staff. They tell me what are the refreshers that they would like, who are the guest speakers that they would like. Um, if they don't like a piece of technology, they tell me what they don't like and what I could maybe investigate to get a hold of and things like that. So. It's, it's been working really well that way. And so, um, so I think it, it'll be quite sustainable. And it's always just really focusing on, on building people's capacity and building their confidence in using things. In the past, we've had um, some more formal structures where any of the training we provided through the library, we would work with HR to issue a certificate for people and that would be recorded on their staff record. And we actually just found that it wasn't really of value to staff and we could, we could use that staff time elsewhere. And, um, and people have preferred a more informal approach to, and a more playful approach to training. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be delivered at the right time and it has to be delivered, the right topics have to be delivered. I think that's the thing of keeping interest and momentum. Um, I'm really mindful of the time and I noticed that no one has, um, has told me to really hurry up, but I just want to show you some couple of other slides. Um, 
uh, I just I use whatever technology is available to me. I I'm not too fussy. I'll I'll learn anything. So when we when we got start uh, when we got SharePoint, I just put all our information on SharePoint. And so this is where we we put all the staff share stuff. Um, as I mentioned, we have a policy uh, or we have an agreement with staff that we, we do share everything. So if you deliver a presentation, you share your notes, you share your slides because another colleague will be delivering that refresher next year. And it gives them a bit of a boost, a bit of a leg up if they've got your slides to update and modify. Um, within or on the platform of staff share, you can deliver surveys. And so I just use that to deliver surveys. We also have a Qualtrics account, so I've done some surveys that way. But um, yeah, you know, just whatever the library has got, I wasn't looking to really, um, well, I actually didn't have a budget for this. It was it was something that, that was put together with whatever I could put my hands on. So it's just really using any of the services that are available. One of the things that we'll be using this year is Polycom Media Suite because that's what IT's given me. So um, I think we've just put our first recording up there about Leganto and soon we will be putting more recordings. We use LibCal to manage um, the, the training that we deliver. And so we have a, a general staff training and conferences calendar. And um, so the green items are, are external events, but all of the, um, the other bluish purple ones, they're all internal things that we're doing. Um, we use this because we use it for students, but also it just works really well. All the staff know how to use it because they show students how to use it, but also you can, you can manage an event really easily. So that's the, something that's coming up this Friday for our staff. Um, it, it connects with all of our other systems so you can export to Outlook. It just works. So it's there, why not use it? Another new thing that happened to us uh, in November last year is that we became, or the library was invited in November, I think we had it a bit earlier, but we became a workplace user, a workplace institution. So it's basically Facebook for, for businesses or Facebook for organisations. I don't know, it's not too bad. I'm still getting used to it. So just wanted to give you a bit of a screen capture and a bit of a look at it. So it's, the library's directorate is a closed group so I can communicate directly with staff. So that same event that you saw on the other screen, I'm just sort of doing a bit of a signal boost and just telling people it's on the calendar. Um, they all received an invitation, but just really reminding them it's on this Friday. If you're interested, please come along. Um, and it's got some fun features. I can say who I was collaborating with on this project. And it's really nice to acknowledge the people that help you to do your job. So I quite like that about Facebook. The other thing I spend a lot of time um, posting is career opportunities for people, sometimes literature, and then of course also training. So we really are at the self-service point of um, staff share at the moment, and it has worked really, really well. Um, every year we have increased our participation. So at the end of the pilot, we had a 27% increase in staff participation, um, which from 2015, and that was just amazing. And I thought it couldn't get any better until I did the statistics for uh, 2017, and in 2017, we had another 22% increase in participation. I don't think that's all due to the staff share program. I think we've had a lot of new things happening in the library, which have required a lot of training, um, but that doesn't always translate into training experiences um, and learning opportunities and engagement opportunities for people. And especially where it is really important, having a dispersed um, staffing cohort, is that is another opportunity for people to uh, to connect, to meet, to talk, to introduce themselves, to catch up with people. I think I've gone on for really long, Rachel. I think am I am I right on the end? Do I do I need to open it up to questions now? Tatum, it's Sue here. What we might do is move to Alex. Um, because we need to um, move through the presentations and then we might see if we have question time at the end. Okay. So Alex, 
Great. So first of all, thank you, Tatum. We will come back to you. And Alex, we might transfer over to you now and um, then we can come back for questions, everyone. Thanks, Tatum. So I've just said yes. And so presumably we've now lost Tatum's screen and you're seeing um, the screen with the footprints on the beach. Um, excellent. Um, I'm just going to talk about our engagement that we've done here at Charles Darwin University. Um, I'm very new to this uni. I've only been here for two years, but I think we do a, a really lot. Um, I'm with the staff the staff working group that look after engagement and wellbeing. Um, one of our principal things that we've done for a few years is our library legs challenge. And this year, last year, 2017, we opened it up to other other libraries. So we said, let's do a library legs challenge throughout the territory. And so we ran it for four weeks. We got 10 teams together with 40 challenges in it from four different libraries. So we had, um, us here at CDU, we had the Department of Health Library, um, the Palmerston City Council Library joined and the Northern Territory Library had people join up. Um, in total, we had um, just under 12 million steps, which was terribly exciting. Um, one team did just under one and a half million steps on its own. And one of those walkers did 450 kilometres in the four weeks, um, which is just awesome. We thought it was fantastic. Um, we had um, everyone put in photos of them out and about. And this pair in the top right hand corner, for example, they were the two librarians from the Nulamboy um, Council Library, which sits under the State Library's banner. And um, this is the walker who did just under 450 Ks. So she was awesome. And we all got out and about taking photos of our teams and where we got to. Um, and of course, at the end of it, we had to have a morning tea because we work in a library and <laughs> we do very good morning teas. And one of the librarians from the health library crochets and she made these awesome library legs headbands. Um, which were a great hit. Um, so it did mean that it wasn't just restricted to the CDU campus, um, various, so we had some health department librarians who met at the beach one morning for a, one of our morning walks, um, which was a really nice way just to get our names out and about. Now, one of the other things that we've run for a few years and is really popular is our dry season photo competition. Um, so this year we had 58 entries this was just within the library here at CDU. We had 58 entries and we asked the photographer from the university to judge. Um, we had a funniest photo, most creative, best caption and best overall. Um, so again, some really lovely um, ideas. And it also meant that we had to find, we had to find a platform that didn't involve people sending us the photos and then us uploading them to a platform. So this year we had a go at using Sway, Microsoft Sway, um, which was an easy way for us to add all the library staff and they could put their photos up there themselves. And then we could de-identify the, um, the photographers. So when the library, when the uni photographer judged, she didn't actually um, get to see who had submitted each photo. Um, so it did work quite well um, and we had to play with some new technology. Um, we also run a wellness month and so this month for example we had a couple of sessions of Pilates, we had some Zumba, we had yoga, we did our beach walks, we had a paper playing competition which I absolutely failed at. Um, we had some games afternoons, the library subsidised massages, so we could all um, book in for a 10 minute massage. And that was really popular. And we had to get this lady back for a third morning of massages. Um, we also had an emotional intelligence presentation from one of our psychology lecturers who's written a book on it. Um, so yeah, we don't get a huge uptake, you know, sort of for each, well, the massage is of course really popular, but um, for some of the other things, we get half a dozen um, participants and it tends to be the same participants. 
bearing in mind we have sort of 42, I think 40, 38, 38 staff here on the Darwin campus. So we're not a big cohort um, anyway, really. Um, and then all year we just generally have, we sort of run some themed morning teas. Oh, here's some photos of our Wellness Month activities with our library mascot in the bottom left hand corner. Um, and so during the year we tend to do quite a lot of social type things. We're only a small group um, and we also took part in the Great Aussie Book Swap this year. We do morning teas. We have Anzac Day Bake Offs where we judge um, the winning Anzac Biscuit. Um, and then we do have to walk in Library Leagues Week to walk off the morning teas, of course. Um, so because we're small, we do a bit of engagement here on campus. We've got um, staff in Alice Springs and we've got a librarian in Sydney. So they tend to take part in the library legs challenges. And I think this fosters a really great relationship. Um, it helps a little bit with collaboration. Um, and I think it's a great place to work here. And I enjoy being on, on, on the wellness group. Um, and we put a bit of time and effort into trying to get things happening so people can take part. Um, that's my little talk. Um, and I'm very open to questions. If anyone has any questions about anything, um, please um, ask now. Thanks Sue and Rachel for the chance to um, share what we've done. So to Alex and Tatum, thank you again uh, for your presentations today. And um, I think also in the uh, slides that will go up um, onto the QLOC website, uh, we'll make sure that your email addresses are in there. Uh, Rachel, if you're there, could you just remind us, um, will we be able to see the chat questions or the Q&A questions? Yes, yeah, so um, you, uh, participants, you can uh, use the Q&A or the chat. Uh, Sue and panellists, you can definitely see them. You just need to bring down that little toolbar and then click on Q&A. There are no questions in Q&A at the moment. And in chat, no questions at the moment. So um, two options. People just need to put their questions out there. <laughs> So uh, while we wait for the questions, I'll just ask Tatum um, if you can just pop your, um, just unmute for a moment. Thanks Tatum. Could you tell us a little bit more about the multi-campus challenges that you've had and, and perhaps just talk a little bit more about how that goes across the multi-campuses? Uh, sure. So. The multi-campus challenge. Well, there's, there's. Um, if if I was to focus on the negative, it it can sometimes feel like an endless array of challenges because, as I mentioned, there's the six campus libraries. They have different operational hours, which you need to factor in. If so, even just delivering a one-hour video conference, it needs to be at a good time where all the libraries will be open not in their peak time. Also when there's an overlap between morning and evening uh, e morning and evening staff. So, cause some of our libraries are open from 7.30 until 9 p.m. And so that crosses over two shifts. So you need to try and uh, navigate all those different things. Um, and, it, and it needs to fit with the roster. So scheduling something for an hour and a half will never work because it crosses a, uh, over two different boxes of the roster and it just knocks out too many people. On some of the bigger campuses, they might have some spare bodies that can, can lend a hand. Um, so I know that sometimes people in our office are really happy to go across the street, work in the library, so that people can go somewhere, do something who are at a service point. But that's there's not always available staff to cover things on other campuses. So it's um, 
it's no question if you have to choose between staff engagement and keeping the doors open we're always keeping the doors open so that's you know that's a big challenge and then even when you're organizing things online different public holidays um you name it there's just endless types of things and so you know we just try and do our best um as far as logistics and scheduling and you know really having full support of managers to to make that happen and to release their staff or support their staff um and then also making sure that we are recording things uh making that available to people putting it on these shared platforms so that you know especially if we're talking about say a refresher um you know semester's about to start we have people who are sessional in the library um so they're coming back after a really big uh, break really big time away and primos probably changed five times since they did their last shift and so what they're able to do is to quickly go on to SharePoint or one of the other platforms not sure this year it might be the Polycom real presence um, and just watch a quick little video and they could even watch that on mute at the desk no one would know and it would just walk them through what are the changes this year what do I need to know in order to feel confident and capable of, of doing the things that I need to do. Does, does, that, um, does that sort of cover all the areas that you were thinking of, Sue? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so look, at this point, we don't have any questions, but I have a feeling that people will think about them afterwards and certainly anyone watching the recording uh, can also uh, ask Tatum and Alex questions. Um, we'd very much like to thank Tatum and Alex for their presentations today. And we hope that those of you who have watched and listened um, will be inspired to do something small or big at your own library this year. Um, and we look forward to catching up um, with Alex um, out walking somewhere. Um, and Tatum uh, at a webinar coming to you. So um, also today we really wanted to thank Rachel Harrison for organising our webinar, all of the many administration things that Rachel does as QLOC Executive Officer. We say thank you, Rachel. And um, so if you're watching this um, afterwards, uh, we hope that you've enjoyed the webinar. And um, please, if you have any suggestions for our working party, um, please also contact the representative at your QLOC library um, or email um, myself as convener this year um, and or Rachel as um, executive officer. So we wish you a very um, engaged 2018 um, and all the best. Have a great day.